It's a weird day in the world of Magic the Gathering. Wizards of the Coast has just revealed an April Fool's secret lair as a joke, but here's the thing. You're actually going to be able to buy it. Magic. I am a wizard! History. I'm an old wizard! The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings! Owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, my friends, I hope the day finds you well. Have you been dodging April Fool's jokes left, right, and center? Well, to mess with you, I'm not actually doing one. This is a genuine video. So, we're talking about Wizards of the Coast's April Fool's joke secret lair, which is going to be going on sale later this month. Now, the secret lair is based around a left-handed concept. It's called Secret Lair Knows It's Left, from its other left, and every card is heavily leftitized. Let's start out with Sisse, the Weatherlight Captain. So you can see right away a number of elements of the cards have been rekajiggered. So the casting cost is now in the upper left hand corner, right? So you got the casting cost followed by the creature's name, which really messes with my head because I'm so accustomed to the normal way of doing things. So, Sisse is one white and two for a legendary human soldier, and you'll notice that the little promo shooting star has also been moved over to the left-hand side. Now, Sisse gets plus one, plus one for each color among other legendary permanents you control, and for one of every color, you can search your library for a legendary permanent card with mana value less than her power, put that card onto the battlefield, and then shuffle. Now, this is an awesome card on multiple levels, right? First of all, it's fantastic for Commander. If you want to play with a ton of crazy legendaries, you want to have access to all the colors. Secondly, from a flavor perspective, the card is absolutely amazing because Sisse is essentially going around and collecting up the crew of the Weatherlight or as well the actual items of the legacy, right? And then the artwork also shows the crew of the Weatherlight. You've got Sisse, who is arm wrestling against Miri, and note, she is arm wrestling using her left arm and winning. We see the back of Miri's head behind Sisse. You can see Tongarth, you can see Squee, you can see Gerard, you can see Karn, and they're all like cheering back and forth for their friends. This is a lot of fun. And if you didn't know, this actually ties into the Urza storyline. The Brothers War story, where Urza becomes a planeswalker, eventually leads to him assembling this group of heroes. And since I'm talking about the Brothers War lore, I will let you know the fourth installment of the Brothers War lore just released yesterday. Absolutely epic storyline. Link will be on the screen at the end of the video. So clearly for me, seeing Sisse here, as one of the inclusions is a lot of fun. And this goofy sort of left-hand style will continue all the way through these cards. So let's move on to the next one, which is going to get people hyped. Empress Galena. Again, Wizards of the Coast picking a real interesting legend. So Empress Galena is two blue and three. Honestly, I really can't get over how different it feels having the casting cost over on the other side. It's a small change, but a significant one. So, Empress Galena is a 1-3 Merfolk Noble, and if I didn't mention, the power and toughness have also been shifted over to the left, with her ability being pay two blue and tap, gain control of target legendary permanent. That is an incredibly powerful ability, obviously. Oh, nice legendary gear you have, I mean, had handed over. The fact that Galena doesn't have to stay on the board, the fact that this effect is really difficult to deal with makes her very potent. And it's honestly time for her to get new artwork. This artwork that they've given her is a lot of fun. You'll see she is wielding her staff in her left hand, right? Looking very imperious and merfolky. I definitely dig the artwork, but there's an extra element to this card that makes it even more fun. And that's the flavor text where it says, few diplomats can resist the charm of her serene highness's imperial seal. 
So when you first read that, you're like, oh, you know what? She's an empress. Okay, so if she puts her seal on a document, then nobody in her empire can refuse her because she's the empress. And then you look at the artwork in the background and you see a seal and you realize that the flavor concept of this version of Galena is that she literally sends her seal to go and get what she wants. I want that dude. Go get him, Flippy. And then the, or, 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 and he flips away. Do, do they make those noises underwater? Probably doesn't sound the same, right? Anyways, off he goes to just go and grab, hey, Karn, come here. He just hops off out of the water, onto land, grabs Karn by the, come on, buddy, you're coming with me. You're going to serve Empress Galena under the sea. It's like, what? Yep, that's what's going down. We're getting Nicol Bolas next. We're going to make you two play patty cakes, right? Like, it's an absurd concept. The fact that... Few diplomats can resist the charm of the Imperial Seal. It's just like the charm is, I love you, Mr. Seal. Yes, I'll come with you. You know, Karn's standing there looking at, chomping down in his arm going, oh, you cute little guy. Come on, where are we going, buddy? I just love that flavor concept. And uh, like, you know, from artwork perspective, this just legit looks better than the original Empress Galena, right? Now, let's move on to the next card. This one is black. This is Giraffe's messenger all right so for three black you get a creature zombie and wow man when you look at the type line the previous two cards we looked at had legendary creature and then two creature types so it took up that whole type line when you look at the zombie and you see the creature type line all the way over on the far right and then the actual promo symbol on the far left that is quite a difference it's very striking so giraffe's messenger enters the battlefield tapped when it enters the battlefield Target opponent loses two life. It has Undying. Undying is an incredibly powerful ability where once the creature goes to the graveyard, it comes back with a plus one, plus one counter on it as long as it didn't already have a plus one, plus one counter on it when it hit the graveyard, right? So it just keeps coming back it's like the persist was this ability to bring a creature back but would make it smaller undying is an ability that brings a creature back but makes it bigger and if you have a way to remove counters you can keep this guy coming back again and again and again right so basically for three black mana if you don't have a way to reuse him or whatever he's going to enter the battlefield nail your opponent for two life when he comes back the second time he's going to nail your opponent for another two life so you've gotten four life and for that three mana you've essentially gotten a three two and then a four three it is a very efficient package right and the concept behind this card is that you have giraffe the stitcher from the world of innistrad this is a creation that he's sending over to his sister to tell him to leave him alone because they have a hilarious relationship where his sister is absolutely way crazier than he is and is just obsessed with hassling him endlessly now Giraffe's Messenger has some really fun aspects in terms of the flavor as well. The flavor text is incredible. The flavor text says, the message is run, right? Like, it's Giraffe's Messenger. I've got a message for you. It's like, no thanks. I refuse delivery, pal. Uh, no, return to sender, whatever it's going to be, right? <laughs> So you take a look at this artwork and you've got this horrible, disfigured zombie who's all leaning forward. And on one side of him, all, almost every arm is on one side. What side? The left side. Take it to an extra level. Every single hand on this fellow, even on his right side, is actually a left hand. So that is a fun attention to detail going hardcore lefty i have to say as a concept for a secret layer this is genuinely a lot of fun so who do we have next we've already had a white card a blue card a black card well we've got a red card rograk son of roga we've got a kobold what a bizarrely random choice it feels like right so rograk is zero to put out he is a legendary kobold warrior and notice that the little color dot that would normally be on the right hand side or sorry on the left hand side has been shifted over to the right hand side and if you don't know what those little dots are that's wizard's way of indicating what color a card is when it doesn't have a casting cost so since rograk doesn't have red in his casting cost he needs that little red dot to basically give him his color identity so rograk is a zero one first strike menace trample creature with partner 
clearly a very much build around it, but also you can slap it into pre-existing Kobold decks. And if you weren't aware, back in the day, in my favorite set of Legends that was released in 1994, they had a bunch of creatures called Kobolds. They were all zero mana for zero ones, but none of them had abilities like Rograk did. They all relied on tribal lords to give them power boosts, to give them trample, to give them toughness boosts, to give them first strike. It was a very fun little tribal concept. Ultimately, not the strongest because it was kind of all over the place, but the fact that they made Rograk, Rogak, I should say, oh no, is it Rograk? Anyways, his name's, his name's brutal to me. Anyhow, they make this fellow, he slots in perfectly. I love that. The flavor text says, Rograk couldn't bear to watch his father pillage his own people. Not when there were so many other people they could pillage instead. So, I mean, when you look at this one, there's not as much comedy to this one. Sure, he is wielding the blade in his left hand. He's just kind of running away from, oh, no, I, your dad's pillaging my people, and we could pillage other people. It's like, all right, that actually just sounds like like a logical thought process. I don't know if there's something I'm missing where it's like, I can't, buy, I can't bear to see my father taking advantage of our own people when we could take advantage of other people. And it's like... Yeah, I guess it's supposed to demonstrate that kobolds aren't good people underneath, but this one's a little bit good because he's like, I don't want to mess with my own people. It misses. It misses for me. Now, we have the final card, which obviously is going to be in the best color in the game, green, and that is Garuk, Color of Beasts. My beefy boy is here. I love Garuk, man. The storyline between him and Liliana and him getting cursed by the chain veil was one of the coolest storylines, right? Like Liliana gets the chain veil and she basically forces evil necrotic magic into Garuk's veins and it's flowing through his body trying to tear him apart and Jace surgically inserts part of a hedron from Zendikar to keep the curse at bay but then Garuk is still this sort of muddled messed up like he loves nature and hates mankind but because of his corrupted essence any natural beast that he touches starts to basically corrupt right in front of him and then he has to destroy it himself because of what he's turned it into there's so much depth with his character i love it anyways let's talk about the card itself two green and four get you a garuk collar of beasts legendary planeswalker all of the loyalty abilities are now over on the right hand side with the loyalty total of four being in the bottom left his first ability for plus one loyalty is reveal the top five cards of your library put all creature cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order the second ability is minus three. You may put a green creature from your hand onto the battlefield. I do like that. And minus seven, you get an emblem with, whenever you cast a creature spell, you may search your library for a creature card, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle. This card is absolutely green through and through. The first ability, letting you dig through for creatures. The second ability, letting you put green creatures straight onto the board for free. And the third ability, literally going, oh, hey, did you cast like a little Lanawar or whatever? Go ahead and grab a gigantic crater hoof behemoth on us, no problem, right? Like the flavor, the flavor of that is deep green, heavily seated in creatures themselves, which I'm a huge fan of. Garuk is shown here in his traditional beefy boy style, right? Except now all of a sudden, Garuk is a left handed version i have to admit this is a hilarious decision in terms of we're gonna make a secret layer and we're gonna go kind of weird with it for april fools but they learned their lesson from their past secret layer the previous one where they had a whole kerfuffle with the one artist who painted himself all that fallout right so they kind of stepped away from april fool's secret layers for at least a year right we didn't get one last year but now they are back with a concept that really can't fail because ultimately people who are left-handed are going to love the special treatment people who are right-handed aren't going to care and feel left out we're not living thankfully in the era where people will take to twitter and complain about handism right we don't <laughs> we don't have to worry about that going down with this so this is a controversy free secret layer that wizards of the coast crafted as a joke but ultimately understands their customer base well enough to make as a product they used to make april fool's jokes where they say we're making this dual decks where it's pirates versus ninjas and people 
people got hyped for it and wanted it. And then Wizards went, oh no, we don't have these. And they finally realized, wait a minute, if we make these joke products, people will buy them. Why don't we capitalize on April Fools by turning it into another sales opportunity? And I have to admit, it's really smart because when I saw the April Fools article and I started to look through the cards, I'm like, man, I hope these are real. Please tell me these are real. When I get to the bottom of the article, tell me they're available for sale on the secret layer site. Tell me this is real. I need this to be real. And then I get to the bottom and it's like, this is real real and i'm telling you this right now my friends this video is not an april fool's joke i am not trying to mess with you this secret layer is real they will be selling it later this month and doing a secret layer super drop so links to the urza lore video and streets of nuka lore on the screen big thank you to my patrons see you guys next time